Hi, I recently bought this wireless humidity temperature sensor from the AliExpress and the only reason was it was just like one dollar almost. And it has no brand whatsoever. Well, I think it worth the price, definitely. And it says the model is TH05Y. And apart from that, there is no information about it whatsoever. I thought it would be pretty interesting if we can just reverse engineer it and also install our own custom firmwares on it. Maybe that way we can use it with our own phones without the apps that they provide. And also maybe we can integrate it to the Home Assistant as well. If you want to also buy it, you can type Bluetooth LCD temperature and just search by the best match. Probably you will came across with the same devices. Look at it. Tuya, temperature, humidity sensor, $1, and also most, all kind of random brands. They are relatively cheaper than the Xiaomi ones, but apart from the face, LCD face, there is not so much difference between them. So just look around and I have faced a few different models apart from the Xiaomi and they almost have the identical PCBs on them. On the box, it says Shenzhen Forever Young Technology Co. Limited, etc. But I think the same thing is sold under different brands and companies. As you expect, there is nothing much inside of the box. You have the device, the temperature and humidity sensor with an LCD screen on it, even with a protective screen. And you also have this sticky thingy. You place it behind it and stick it on the wall or something. And it comes with a user manual and it is in English. That's indeed a good thing. And there's even an app that you can install on your phone. I don't feel comfortable installing Chinese app on my phone. But, well, if you want, it is your phone and your life, no one is stopping you. And that's the all contents that it has. They even included a protective screen, which I won't be bothering to remove it right now, but it is a nice addition, of course. And I think it even comes with a battery, let's see. Yeah, and it works right out of the box. It is not that bad at all. I mean, it looks okay and small. Well, it's totally usable if it is showing the correct temperature, of course. And if the Bluetooth functionality is working as well, well, it is quite a plus, I think. I'm definitely worth the price that you are going to pay for it. Let's see how it looks without the protective screen. Yeah, it looks quite readable, I think. And behind it, you also have this button. And if you press it, you can change the unit to Fahrenheit from Celsius or go back to Celsius again. If you are lucky, maybe we can even add more functionality to it. I was trying to see the advertising data on my phone, but it wasn't showing up. So I realized that the Bluetooth or connection segment was not blinking and you can press the button or hold the button for a while and it will start blinking again. Then afterwards, the device starts advertising and you can see it on your phone. The device name is KS2, but apart from the device name, you cannot see any other, let's say, standard profiles on it. All of the Bluetooth services are the custom ones and you need their app to communicate with the device. So the Bluetooth functionality is useless if you don't want to install the app. Let's crack it open and see what's inside of this. To open the back cover, you need something like a pry tool because it's really tight fitted and you cannot open it with your hands. It uses standard coin cell battery as a power source. On the PCB, we do not have so many components. And I'm guessing this one is the microcontroller because here is the Bluetooth PCB antenna. And this long one is probably the LCD driver. And here is your push button. And here is your temperature and humidity sensor and one unpopulated area. I assume they have other versions and they just solder it as a different product than this. 
And on this side, there isn't really much test points or anything. I will remove the PCB entirely and try to see what's on the other side. In this product, they picked up one chip and one LCD driver solution instead of picking just a microcontroller which has both. It is the same concept that I did for the common kitchen timer with the LCD replacement port. Over there, I went with ESP8266 port as a microcontroller and I used an LCD driver. So here, they also used a similar concept. Removing the PCB was a little bit harder than I was expecting it. But in a good way, I think. You probably don't want to, let's say, hear any rattling sounds if you shake it. It's pretty dead silence right now. Uh, it was a little bit hard to remove it from the case. I guess I also need a pry tool like that. Let's see. I didn't really need a tool at all. And all I did was applying a little bit of force to this side and pushed a little bit on the LCD lightly and the PCB just popped out. LCD is a little bit tight fit here. You cannot just remove it like the cheap ones, but well, just after applying a little bit force, it also comes up. It is one of the cheap LCD modules. Here is your zebra strip, which is generally used on the kind of cheap LCDs and there is no driver on it whatsoever. And on this side, we have test pads, which is good news. Probably they just left it out after designing the PCB. We can also identify the PCB with the marking and it says TH05Y. Also, all the test paths are marked for your convenience. I think it's going to be probably easier than just following all the lines on the PCB. Here are the high resolution pictures of the both sides. And on the front side, the microcontroller is marked as PHY6222 and it is this small blob and here we have our temperature and humidity sensor it is CHT8305 which is marked here and I couldn't figure out the LCD driver but I think we can find it later on and Probably it's one of the generic LCD drivers, which you can find it on the Chinese markets. Let's see. And also what this picture reveals is the pinouts. You can see you have your first OART communication pads and battery connections here. And also there is a second OART and a reset pin. It is really populated out. And also you can see the connections for the temperature sensor. Here, those pads are for all driving the LCD, segment LCD. The microcontroller is from PHY plus microelectronics and it has an ARM Cortex M0 processor. And apart from all the specs, the power consumption is pretty impressive. So I should say if the data which is written is true, the battery should last quite a while. And here is the data sheet for the temperature and humidity sensor. It's from Sensilic Microelectronics. And also it's working on the I2C communication bus. Good thing about this microcontroller is you can find the SDK online on GitHub and also the documentation is in English, so which is way better than trying to figure out Chinese documentation. I will put a link down in the description. What I learned after reading of it is you can flash this microcontroller using UART connections. But as you can see, there are two words. One of them is down below here, TX1 and RX1. And also you have a second one, which is here, TX2 and RX2. I will first try uploading the custom firmware using the first word. And of course I will use these battery connectors. Probably we won't really need the I2C pins over here for the sensor. So I will just leave them out. And also we need to solder something to the reset pin, which is also marked here. I soldered a few cables, just like I mentioned. And on the other side of the cable, I used a crimping tool and installed these pins. 
To flash a custom firmware, you also need a USB to UART converter like this one. However, this one doesn't have a reset outlet, so, so you need to quickly touch the reset pin to the ground just before the flashing. It is a little bit tricky, but after trying a few times, it works quite fine. I will also connect these using the spreadboards. Here is what my final setup looks like. And on the connection, you need to connect adapter ground to V battery minus and 3.3 volt to plus V bat. And also TX to RX1 and RX to TX1. And if you have the reset button on the adapter, then you can also connect reset button to RST1. After trying a few examples on the SDK, I was thinking about using BT Home standard for broadcasting to be able to use this device on Home Assistant. However, after checking the GitHub, someone already did all the hard work and even provided all the different versions. So I decided to give this one a go instead of inventing the wheel again. I will put a link down in the description. First, you need to download the files from the GitHub and then open a terminal inside of that folder. Afterwards, you need to install the requirements with this command. If you prefer written explanation, I will also provide that down in the description. After this, you are ready to flash your firmware. You need to quickly touch the ground pin to the reset pin. And after removing the ground pin from the reset pin, the flash will continue. You only need to do this once, and this firmware is only for over-the-air downloads. You can install any firmware updates with the Bluetooth later on. After this step, your device is ready for over-the-air updates. So to do that, you can use your browser and click this link. But this thing only works on Chrome, Brave browser, and also Edge. So to open that, I am using Brave browser right now. And open a new tab and type Brave and Flex. And here, search for Bluetooth. And afterwards, you need to enable Bluetooth, I mean the web Bluetooth. After this, you need to type in the prefix of the device that you have and press connect. Also, you need to press the button to enable the advertising and select the correct device. It should start with the prefix and press pair. Then you need to click the OTA over the air and select the firmware that you want to install. I'm gonna install the beta firmware, then I'm clicking start. By the way, I already installed the firmware earlier, so that's why you can see the temperature and humidity levels here. But apart from this line, the steps are the same, and you need to wait this step to complete, and you are ready to go. For a stable communication, try to keep the device near to the computer. So it is finished right now, and it takes around a minute and afterwards you can again connect the device and if you want to update it again you can follow the same procedure for home assistant integration go to your settings and here click devices and services and here click add integration button in here type bt home and if it is not installed install that since I already installed it, it's already discovering the device. Then click that and just click submit. And of course you can assign it to an area like the usual way that you, how you add integrations to your home assistant. Then you can see the sensor values on your dashboard. You can use this as a thermometer for your home assistant, of course, or assign these values to trigger any actions. Apart from that, there are two UART ports and you can also use that to trigger another device. If you are interested in that, I will provide the link down in the descriptions so you can just follow the reading. So in my honest opinion, if you are on the market for looking at such a device, you can get these. With the original firmware, I wouldn't really want to use those. However, after the custom firmware, it is totally usable. And compared to me thermometer, I think this Cheap clones are better, at least they have a better readability, as you can see. And compared to me thermometer, they are way cheaper. However, some people might choose the other one. I guess it's a matter of a choice. Some people might prefer a darker LCD, which is the one on the right. And with the new custom firmware, the battery will last around a year. 
So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and see you next time.